Right then, welcome back to another preview, as always, brought to you by our friends at Parry Match. This time it is Bournemouth playing them uh, on Saturday. And um, obviously the draw at home to Liverpool following the disappointment of the defeat to Chelsea, as well as dropping points the week before, leaves United in complete and utter no hope of finishing inside the Champions League spots. Despite, you probably saw the tabloids going, there is a way United can finish sixth and get in the Champions League. Yeah, it requires West Ham to win Europa League and to finish above us in fifth place. They're not going to do that. Either of those things. So, anyway. United are not going to be in the Champions League unless someone gets points deductions for something above us, which, looking at the Premier League this year, actually wouldn't necessarily rule out, although I don't think it's likely. So we're in a precarious position because even though you go, all right, let's just play the youth and let's get through to next year, United could end up finishing very low down. We could even end up as far as ninth if everything goes our way or doesn't go our way this weekend. Um, losing here could see United drop as low as eighth. Um, and, you know, potentially even worse than that if things don't go our way. So Bournemouth are, are sitting in 12th, um, but they are still well within reach of getting into the top half and potentially even a European finish. Uh, they're on 42 points. Uh, they're only seven points behind sixth place West Ham. Um, could go within, you know... Just a few of us with a win. So we got to really mind our P's and Q's here. I think goals will be a feature of this game. Both sides don't really keep a lot of clean sheets. It's going to be a bit open. And obviously United seems to be really favouring that chaos at the moment. Um, but it starts to feel like the sort of game Eric Tanha can't afford to lose. Um, decisions are being made for next season. And I think if there's another non-victory in this I, I think people are going to start giving each other the eyes um around the boardroom tables and uh, that would probably spell the end of Eric Ten Hag I think so how do they play well in possession it's a 4-2-3-1 that resembles quite a lot of a 4-3-3 Ariola today hasn't really been a complete total possession-based coach um, or one that necessarily focuses on building out from the back no matter what um, isn't a coach that forces his players to take risks in the build-up um, if the opposition press really well and uh, and press really high um, you know there, there's a possibility of him losing the ball at the back then he ain't afraid to just smash it long um, however if they're not pressed they will play out um, usually building up via their fullbacks that's what they like to do um, in settled possession with um, the ball in the opposition half. They're going to look to recycle possession. They're going to look to be patient. They're going to look to try and work the ball with wide triangles, diamonds, try and play quick combinations, try and speed it up, try and get to that sort of one-touch pass and move kind of thing. Um, and chance creation seems to come mainly from crosses or cutbacks. Which, as you know... He's a little bit of kryptonite for Manchester United. Uh, and they are very, very dangerous, quick, tricky, and physical forwards, which I think are a danger to, to any side, not just United. Against pretty much every single opposition that play against a back four, they will go with a 4-4-2 defensively. They will press high on goal kicks, and they will look to force opposition uh, to play uh, a pass to one of the centre-halves. That's what they're going to look to try and do. Uh, the attacking midfielder will press the centre-half, um, that receives it, and then the striker will look to try and pass, uh, cover the pass back to the goalkeeper. Uh, the man marking element seems to come with the ball, um, the ball side winger, um, sort of trying to cover the fullback, and then one of the DMs will try and mark the opposition single pivot while the other one pushes onto the ball side midfield. If that gets broken down, then the opposition uh, starts to go long. Then they'll quickly recover into a 4-4-2 mid-block. Uh, and then they will look to try and stay compact, stop any central space passes, and try and force the opposition to go wide. From there, they can look to win the ball back um, and either counter or force the opposition to play backwards. And then they'll move their defensive line further up the pitch. So... <sighs> This does have the potential to be quite open, even though I don't necessarily think that's what Bournemouth will want. It is a bit of a nature of how they end up playing. Starman, um, and honestly, people are not talking about him whatsoever, but Dominic Solanke 
16 Premier League goals, three assists in 31 games so far this season. He's been fantastic for them. And he is a big physical power runner um, that is very technically sound. Uh, I think he came through that Chelsea Academy. Um, you know, handles the ball really well. Always been a decent finisher. Finding his level really being like a, a starting Premier League striker that's reliable. And if it's someone that can get close to 20 goals, mate, that, there's going to be a lot of people that would want that sort of player in the team. In terms of United, um, I'm going to keep pushing for moving Bruno over to one side. Um, I don't think, I don't think the manager will, but I'm going to keep pushing for Bruno to be moved out of the number ten position in some way, shape, or form. I'm going to go with. I think the same back four we played against Liverpool. I think it'd be Wamba Saka, Delo, uh, Maguire, and Willy Kambala. I don't think anybody else has become available. Um, which means in midfield it'll be Mainu. And after that performance of Casemiro, I don't think he can start. I would like to see us experiment. And even though I'm advocating for Bruno to have moved over to one side, I've, I've tried to see if we could play him on the right-hand side. I mean, I say I've tried to see it. I've asked for it. doesn't mean I've tried to see it. I haven't been at Carrington going, listen, come here. What about? Can we play Bruno as an eight? He's got the box-to-box -box running and energy. Now, that doesn't mean Menu is a six. We don't have a six. So I'm looking to try and cover the ground here a little bit and bring Mason Mount into the team. Because I think those three maybe can control the ball. The other option is Christian Eriksen. I don't know the, the status of him and the match fitness. I feel he's behind Mason Mount in that. And I feel like Mason Mount would be more suited to this sort of game. Otherwise, can we play Mason off the right-hand side? I just want a bit more control in there. United seem to be just playing far too many forwards and not enough control. You know, everyone's a forward. Even Bruno is a forward, really. Like, we are not controlling the ball at any point, so I wanted to bring extra midfielders in and try and look after the ball just a little bit better. Um, and then I think uh, Rashford and Hoyland. So, I guess, and Garnacho on the right, if he's, if he's not going to play Mount there, if he's going to play um, Bruno in the 10, then Mount off the right, if it's... You know, does he have the balls or can we play with Bruno and Menu as a pair of sixes or as a pair of energetic eights? Uh, I don't think so, but you know, I'm just trying to think options. Bruno can do that deep line role. He's got the range. I think the one weakness you could argue in Kobe Menu's game at the moment is he doesn't seem to have the passing range. Bruno would. And you need those forward passes. There's no point Bruno trying to get on the end of things when you haven't got the people that can get it to him for him to get on the end of things. So let's bring him back and try and have him dictate a play. Like, he can be an 80-pass kind of guy. We've seen it in the, the Evan game last year. I'm going to put my... I want to see Bruno Menu as a pair of sixes with Mount ahead of them. Almost, call it free eights, if you will. That's what I would like to see. And then you can go with Garnacho, Hoyland, and um, Rashford up front. Or... If you don't want to play Rashford or you don't want to play Garnacho, pick whichever one. Bring Ahmad in. Do that. Anyway, match winner, um, Mason Mount. Uh, Bruno's out of form. I think Mount brings a lot and I think he's got a lot to prove and I think he's going to want to finish the season strong because it's not been a strong season for him. He's a bit of an asset out of possession and I think he's a real asset in possession. This midfield needs a spark. It's a big area of weakness for United. That's why I'm sort of desperate to change something because I think we can change something and I think bringing Mason Mountain might be the something that we can change. Now, as I said at the top of the video, this is brought to you by our friends at Parimatch, like all of our previews. And Parimatch have a completely free-to-play football prediction game called Hattrick Hunt. Every single week, you will get the chance to predict just three scores from the Premier League, uh, and you'll get free rewards for every correct score that you make. If you get all three correct, you'll be rewarded with a £50 free bet. It is that simple, and it's completely free to play. Here's what I'm going for with the Hattrick Hunt predictions this week. I'm going with City to beat Luton 4-1. I thought about this being like a 4 or 5 nil job, um, but I feel like Luton might give an, an early scare. Maybe not score first, 
I think City probably take the lead. Luton grab one back. Everyone start flapping, and then City just go on and, and win the game. Liverpool versus Palace. Chris Dambull, this will not be, unfortunately, as much as we'd all like to see it completely crumble for them. I think Liverpool just get the job done. At home, they are weirdly effective, and Palace are poor. So I think a 2-0 straightforward win for Palace. But there's going to be some action in the title race this week, and I think it will be Aston Villa, Unai Emery, causing a massive upset. Arsenal have had a tough game midweek. They've had some question marks placed over them, and I think that... They'll have Champions League on their mind a little bit and take their eye off the ball. And I think Aston Villa grab a 1-0 cheeky win at the Emirates and send Arsenal fans into absolute meltdown. That's how I think it's going to go, if you agree. Let me know in the comments. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to get involved yourself, just click the link below. You've got to be 18 to play. Full T's and C's do apply. Cheers to Parimatch for sponsoring this video. And like we said... Got to be 18 plus and all those good stuff. Uh, bonuses will expire in seven days. Uh, the prizes do include free bonuses and they will be credited within 24 hours of the last event. First of all, fullbacks have got to be on it. I think delow has been pretty good lately. I think uh, Wambasaka just coming back to regular football, probably be okay. Um, but they've got some really dynamic wingers. Um, I'm not sure who's available, but they've got some really, really dynamic win uh, wingers and wing play uh, is where they seem to make a lot of their opportunities. Like I said, they're quite cross-heavy and they can be quite dangerous from those. It's the sort of area that has caused us a lot of trouble. So I would expect if the fullbacks are on it, and I think Delo's in really good form, uh, obviously outside of the Chelsea game, but I think Delo's in some pretty good form. Um, secondly, compactness and aggression. Um we say this weekly, and occasionally uh, we do manage to ride our luck, but making a game end-to-end, -end, uh, especially when the crowd gets going, isn't good for us. United need to have control, and that requires us being compact, not open, not having six players go press the ball and just leave the back four to deal with whatever. You know, you, you can see how good they are at exploiting transitions and gaps because of their quick forwards. You'll play into their hands if that's what you do. They're not afraid to just clip it into the channel. And if you go 3v3 or 4v4 in the back line, you are rolling a dice every time that you're going to be able to sweep that up. Do not let it happen. Yeah? You sort those things out and you've got a bit of talent on the pitch that can go and put the ball in the back of the net at the other end. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.